Reject Nation. We're here today to bring the pace. Pacemaker, season one, episode three. Better Goff Dead. Guys, thank you so much for watching along with us on this journey. If you can go ahead and leave a like, that would be very much appreciated. Also, subscribe, get accepted to the Reject Nation so you can also get notified when our next reaction for Peacemaker is up here on the channel. Massive thanks to all who have joined our Patreon page and become super rejects. Over there, we do the full-length watch-alongs. We sync up with the time code for Peacemaker, cover a whole bunch of shows over there as well. Lastly, of course, thank you to the boys at Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. You guys have been doing great work. Let's get into action, people. This has been an amazing journey thus far. Is Project Butterfly homunculi the team up with hard body sluts that want to control us? No. Who's the guy that's peeking out behind the trash can? Oh, God. Oh, dude. I'm just looking for behind a trash can. It's a normal thing to do. The hell it is. Are you a psychiatrist? What? Then don't tell me what's normal. Maybe my secret identity is a psychiatrist, and I know what's normal. <laughs> Even if they end up being okay to work with, they're still not going to be good friends. And none of them is the type to be a best friend. Okay. You don't know that. There's a bunch of rumors going around about you being racist, and, you know, frankly, it's a little embarrassing for me. As if I become a racist by osmosis. Even though I mostly kill white people. So, catch you guys later. <laughs> Our target is Senator Roiland Goff. He's mostly known for being a radical proponent of climate change. Okay, so we're gonna kill him because climate change is a hoax. <laughs> climate change is a hoax. Uh, it's not a hoax. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Facebook's lying to me every day for no reason. <laughs> oh, no. Thanks, photo. Oh. oh, my. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so sorry. My wife sent it to me. Your wife? Oh. Yes. That's unexpected. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So she just moved to a different hotel because Hardcore said that it would be dangerous if you Oh, see. shit. Oh, okay. She just threw you under the bus. So this is my fault now? No. <laughs> Goff may be traveling with his family. That is a weird segue. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all, of all of them? This is the part where you tell me what the fuck a butterfly is. We're not here to answer your questions, Smith. So what, is it just trust us and shoot kids? Come on, man, look how adorable that one is. The other one, not so much. It's got like a children of the corn vibe going on. <laughs> Aww. This is Goff's bodyguard. Goes by the name of Judo Master. <laughs> he wanted us to stop and take the sniper rifle to an engraver and put a dove of peace on it. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can kill someone with something that doesn't have the double piece on. It's gotta be on brand. Fuck, every time I draw a double piece, it looks like a ghost. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was all one shot. <laughs> Let's actually draw this. Go. <laughs> You've never said, uh, it's chilly in here. It's chilly a feeling? Yeah, I think so. No. Come on, you've <laughs> never said you felt chilly? Why? Think I'm some weak-ass girly man who needs a puffy jacket or a little black? <laughs> you gonna bring me a baby pacifier for that? No. <laughs> That's how I thought of it in the past. Now I'm becoming a deeper, more well-rounded individual. <laughs> in fact, I'm a little chilly right now. <laughs> but I saw it as an opportunity for growth to say I was. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's the psychology episode. <laughs> Just kill the kids. No questions asked. You'd think she could just kill people. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's pretty good at it. It'd be a lot less conspicuous than <laughs> Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Brother Bear, and Sister Bear all accounted for. We've got a bodyguard and Cobra Kai in the Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> Copy. Experienced Dane Bears. I was just about to joke about that. Dude, I grew up on those books. It's Berenstein Bears. Mm, absolutely not. It's actually named after the creator, Stan and Jan Berenstein. Does this fucking matter? <laughs> it's Berenstein. No. I don't mean to correct you, sir, but it's shut up. It is fair and stained. They're about to enter the house. What he's about to do is throw another goddamn shot. If you don't get him now, Smith, we'll probably have to wait till morning. Yeah, that's not helping me make the big motherfucker in front of him disappear, okay? You want me to take him out, too? No. He could have made that shot. It's a peacemaker. 
I know why he wasn't taking the shot, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 zombies? I know. We're not killing anyone who doesn't deserve it. I'm not Amanda Waller. Ooh. You gonna take that? God, it must be so boring being a sniper. It's like boring backed with a moment of pure adrenaline. Yeah. <laughs> it's all leading to this. <laughs> There's one thing James Gunn knows how to do is communicate love through the use of music soundtracks. Mm -hmm. so after high school, I joined the CIA. Spent a couple years in the DEO, then Argus. That's where Walmart found me. No. Here I am, living the dream. About to assassinate a couple of children. <clears throat> I love you. <laughs> hey, can you uh, can you watch for a second? Sure. Yeah. It's it's a freak. Oh my God, her feelings of attraction. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here, man? I followed you guys in my vigilante mobile. Where'd you get a vigilante mobile? You've been in it. The Seabrook. <laughs> Vigilante needs to stay there with you. I don't want him going out and fucking this up. Dude. You're a fucking clown. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're oh, yeah. pouring some sort of honey-colored goo into bowls. They're butterflies. How do you know? Because that's what they do. They're just like an alien race or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kill him! Now! Take the shot! Peacemaker, take him out! Even the kids? Yes! All four beds, now! If you have a shot, terminate him immediately! Whoa, what a cool shot. Yeah. God damn it! Walla gave us a killer who can't kill! Come on, vigilante, get in there. Hey, dude, move over for a sec. Oh, wow. Don't fuck this up, dude. <laughs> he was vigilante, man. He's a great shot. Mm -hmm. ah! Woo Mama Bear, out. Oh. Susie Bear, out. And now, Papa Bear, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, this is coming, Pete. How court do you copy? Oh, he's fast. Yeah, and strong. Oh. Whoa. Fuck. The main one to kill was Papa Bear. Yeah. Kill, kill everyone but Jesus. <laughs> Oh, off, dude! Ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Uh, no, no, fuck this. No way. It's over. You won. Fair fight. I, I gotta go. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice costume, bro. Well, tight. I can count the veins in your dick. Big, swole man. So tough. <laughs> Remember when I fucked you up? What you eating? The flaming hot Cheetos? Yes. Want some? Yeah. <laughs> Ah. Get it. Oh, fuck, oh. man. What the fuck do they put in Cheetos? <laughs> ah, seriously, stop. How do you kick that Cheeto without a brick? <laughs> <laughs> what do they put in Cheetos? <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, you knew it. There's only one place car batteries go. Damn, you good. Well done, out of bio. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Identity reveal. Mm. He's trying to cover. Changing my facial expressions. He won't be able to recognize me in the lineup. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh. How do you like that? I like it. I like it a lot. I don't give a fuck. You're not gonna break me, motherfucker. Oh, good God, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
I'll peel off the back and put it on the door. <laughs> That's some Mission Impossible shit. I'm not giving this guy anything. Uh, maybe you could just give him a little. <laughs> 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 The best way to get them to talk is to hurt the ones they love most. What? Fuck it. <laughs> Cut off all his toes. I don't care. Dude, <laughs> if someone doesn't have their pinky toe, they fall over. It's the most important toe on the human body. I don't think that's true. What is? I read it on the oh, internet. No. Ow, ow, ow. Poor guy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Is he taking off all his toes? I think he's just taking a while to get that one off. <laughs> Because it's got to be more complicated than it looks in movies. Uh, why is it not coming uh, off? Because your blades are dull as fuck, man. Ah, uh, uh, why don't you maintain your torture shit? Ah, uh, Jesus! Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, good. Gross. God damn it. Come oh, on. <laughs> I guess it's not working. Oh, yeah. He knew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Ouch. peace out, motherfucker. <laughs> Boom. Nice. <laughs> I said, stop. Yeesh. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Economist, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I need to put my mask back on in case they come down. Oh. Butterfly! <laughs> Maybe shoot that. Oh. Project Butterfly. <laughs> oh, wow. A global mission. Enough for hundreds of episodes. <laughs> post credits. Post credits. You can't forget. Dude. What? If you fuck up this mission, I will kill your fucking family. <laughs> okay. Good luck. A little late for that. <laughs> you guys got beer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Those are fun. Peacemaker getting darker and more mysterious. I'm excited for this one, man. I don't know what the hell the butterflies are. I don't know anything about them. But that's cool to see that they're, uh, it's cool to see that it's like, like they, they tease it on like it could be a global threat, but I love how contained they kept it for these first three episodes. Just keep what's called Evergreen is what they're at. Uh, I think so. I Whatever think. this town is. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like how they've kept it pretty contained for the most part, but they did travel here. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's like you think there's just kind of a few of them, but to see how massive the threat is, is uh, pretty neat. So it opens the door for something much bigger to come. But I like how they have kept, like, keeping Peacemaker in the dark about it, letting it be slowly unveiled through the audience, and then allowing this episode to tonally go down a, a darker path. Like the cons watching Peacemaker as he's been struggling. Like he's been having like a crisis, right? O over his identity in the sense of, you know, I've always been about peace. I'm willing to kill men, women, and children. And then, <laughs> you know, the fact that he's uh, feeling the weight of the guilt over like the way he's viewed. And then also the, I think the killing Rick flag really did a number on him a lot. And so having to kill children is like, this isn't the peacemaker that was set up in the Suicide Squad. But yet, actually, funny enough, I would say that this episode uh, reminded me more of what we saw James Gunn do in the Suicide Squad more than the other two. Uh, something about the wood setting kind of gives you a little yeah. bit of jungle vibe and like the way how he uses the fight scenes. He did it in the first episode, too. But I love those kind of fight scenes that a lot of directors do nowadays where it's like you really follow the movement. Yeah. You know, so it lands a little bit. And of course, the use of the sound design, like if you're watching with headphones, you 
you could really feel the impact of that. Um, but I think like my main takeaway is actually the development of the relationship between Adrian and a Peacemaker. Oh yeah. Uh, watching the way how, you know, like him being unmasked, it suddenly does create a connection, I think, for Peacemaker, for John Cena, to see like, oh, I actually know who you are. Yeah. And um, to know like, hey, you actually, he, like, yeah, you're like, you're, he, like uh, Adrian Chase earned respect in his eyes. Yeah. I'm seeing like, oh, you were once this like scrawny little guy, but I see where you're at now. It's cool to, to see that, because you know, that guy just really wants to be like Peacemaker's best friend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah. And he's always been resistant towards him, and it's here he's actually seeing him receptive, and then they could have a good partnership. And the comedy of that, like, I thought this was a really, like, tense episode, and uh, it felt darker, felt like the James Gunn darkness. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah. Li I like seeing that on display here. Like, it felt really violent, gritty. And uh, I just felt like messed up. <laughs> so, yeah, it really yeah. did. And I mean, it confronted multiple characters with that. And, and just to see the different attitudes, it's like you've got, you know, Harcourt and Mern both being like, just do it, just take the shot. And you've yeah. got, you know, people like Adebayo and both and Peacemaker, you know, coming up against, you know, her first kill, his, you know, he's so used to this and now he's beginning to question it. And so, yeah, it's like they zero in on the act of killing throughout, regardless of whatever circumstances are also heightening, you know, the, the flavor of the show and yeah like I, I really like that uh just beat of like I, I like the you know the way vigilante is here like yeah he is a bit of a goof and a joke but also when it counts you know he's pretty proficient and so watching them yeah watching him be unmasked and it being this person who i you know chris would never think would be capable of this and yet you know is uh yeah that was like really endearing while also being twisted which is you know perfect james gunn territory to blend opposing tones that way and uh it, yeah watching them build that and watching just like little bits of trust being built across the team like with uh you know uh, uh economist and Mern or uh you you know, like I said, Peacemaker and uh, Harcourt and things like that. Like, uh, this was nice because it's like so contained and focused. Mm -hmm. You're almost you're like in one place this whole time, and I think you pointed that out. And uh, and yet, like this whole I don't know, this whole series thus far feels like the perfect blend of like it's just big enough, but it's also grounded enough that it's exactly what it needs to be. And uh, yeah, like everything I thought packed a punch here, whether it was the emotional stuff or like the fight with Judo Man master the various gore effects you know i think what he's what what's cool about what he can do with this show is utilize a little bit more what he was trying to do with the suicide squad taking oddball characters people who seem like non-threatening at first people you just really underestimate by appearance and then you watch them in action and you see they are like a real threat like obviously with the suicide squad we saw him do that with like polka dot man to a to a really great extent and then here it's like judo master you by this point you're accustomed to the show they're like that guy's probably like a total ass kicker you you yeah. probably you would assume that he's probably really great at his job but again the whole thing with like the physical appearance he's tiny and uh he's got a silly costume on so he's always like, eating cheetos <laughs> you know, so he seems like you'd just be like a, a not threatening character then you'd see that he really is like a lethal badass of sorts there is something that just feels like yeah you use the word uh twisted there is there is this like level of like a, a macabre type of comedy to mm -hmm. it all and it's like i wouldn't say it's like sinister uh but i would definitely say that there is something like gleefully sadistic about some of this There's yeah a gallows quality <laughs> yeah. to a lot of the humor here yeah. yeah and i like it though it's it's oh, yeah. it's getting progressively darker and i wonder like because i think that's what could sometimes happen with guns movies that i think where people reach a territory where it's like too dark now. Like, yeah, yeah, like I think that's happened. Twisted, I think weird. that's happened with a yeah. lot of people with his prior films. It's like gone too far in the darkness. Now. <laughs> this yeah. is off putting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the part where I'm wondering like how far will this show push it? Yeah, there because the first two pretty lighthearted, um, like while having like the depth of the characters that are like underneath the comedy and all the dick jokes and whatnot. There's <laughs> there's still uh, there there is that darkness there. And then here it's like you really started to peel that back a lot more, yeah. um, just in the way like the it it not only has a 
captured, but it, you feel like the threat of it all. And I do, I, I do love this one a lot. I think yeah. each episode has progressively advanced the story in a way that feels like I'm watching a long movie ultimately unfold before my eyes, and with uh, specific themes like yeah, it's the psychiatry episode, the psychology <laughs> episode, as you pointed out. That seems to be the psychology has been an undercurrent throughout all these episodes, in particular in this one, they kind of brought it to the forefront a lot more with uh, examining out loud, like who these people are, you know, and yeah, that whole concept of like dealing with killing, you know, it, it is cool to take these characters that we saw in Task Force X and, and the Suicide Squad and you got like Harcourt who's a badass, who does seem like she's attracted to Chris in some ways. Yeah. And then you got Adebayo, the daughter of Waller, who clearly she's so she has to keep it a secret, but surrounded by a perception of who her mom is. And it seems like she doesn't even fully know who her mom yeah. is, that her mom really is like ruthless as fuck. And then uh, Economos. Uh, who is funny, but even for him in that scene with Judo Master, I was like worried for him. Like, hey, he said he's never been in like a, in the last episode, he's never been in like a gunfight or something like that, yeah. like shootout or something. So he's never really experienced like the violence firsthand. Like that feel, felt like a moment for him to, um, like a, a path, a, 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 a path, a path. Write a passage in some way, and, and, you know. Like it's, I was nervous for him. <laughs> that I was like, like, are you gonna get killed right now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, is he gonna get back up? Is this some kind of ploy? Yeah. And and that this was, was the most tense one, I would say. Yeah, and that moment with Economist and even the stuff with Adebayo, I thought did nicely to like you know I was already really invested mm -hmm. in and enjoying the team, but I think they've drawn this particular team in such a way where you can see why they're all there, and even though they're all you know funny in their own way, and even though there are buffoonish aspects to a character like Economist, for example, uh, they still feel plausibly part of this elite team. And then moments like that where like, yeah, he has to act fast and you're like, oh God, is he going to fuck this up? And then no, he he does what he has to do. He, you know, smashes into the guy's car and knocks him out. And like, it's, yeah. it's dirty and it's rough. And so there's that tension that comes out of that. But also like, yeah, he got the job done. And so like yeah. things like that are like, okay, so I can see how all these people wound up on this team together, you know, just for the potential of that. Yeah, and I guess it's about uncovering a little bit more about the Clemson character. Yeah. Was that, this is my favorite one of him. Yeah. This is the most... Uh, Again, the psychology peel one. Back yeah. The <laughs> yeah, he's getting chilly. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it seems like there's definitely more to him, in, especially in those final moments. When he got up, he threw the phone down, that there's... Uh, I don't know, I think there's something to suspect about him. Yeah, and I wonder what that's going to be, because too, like, at the start of the series, it's like, okay, so he's going to be kind of our Waller stand-in almost, because, you know, Viola Davis is off doing other things. Uh, but, you know, it starts to reveal here, or at least it suggests to me that, like, okay, we're going to see now how he's different from a man true, Waller true. as time goes on. But as this episode stands, this was great, man. It's I think there's a solid, I think this was a good choice for these three episodes to be the ones to debut together. Like it sets you up perfectly for the full package of the adventure. Yeah. You got things going on with Robert Patrick in prison, <sighs> the two cops. Um, it, now we got a better sense of like what the butterflies are without really knowing what they are, but some type of alien species. Yeah. And then a good setup for all the characters that we've been following. Yeah. You know, like we, I feel like we really know who they are now and now we're watching all of them. I think for a show, it's it's so impressive because this is a big ensemble mm -hmm. and James Gunn's so good at writing characters in a way where you can kind of feel like you instantly know who they are. Yeah. So when you already have such a great effect of already like, I instantly know who these guys are, then every time you're with them more, it just feels like you're getting to know them better. Yeah. And you can't say that for a lot of shows, <laughs> uh, especially this early on. And it, 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 like the way he does weave in and out of it is so great. And then to get like perfect casting for like fucking everyone. Yeah, you know? <laughs> this is a terrific ensemble across <laughs> like, the board. E like everyone's perfect. Uh, and everyone's got great chemistry. <laughs> like what a great cast. Yeah, uh, it's it's insane. It's like we know he can pull off an ensemble and guide that <laughs> ship. Uh, but to s see it in a show where not none of it's not a flashy ensemble. It's yeah. not like he's this archetype. He's this archetype. He's this yeah, archetype. Yeah, he's yeah, this yeah. one on the team. He's this one. You know, and usually that's how it goes with these series. Is like it's really obvious who they are, but they're all distinct in ways that feel more unique than your average television series. Yeah. 
So I'm I'm very much impressed with this so far. I think it's I think it's really good and not for everybody though. I imagine <laughs> I can't imagine it's for everybody. Nah, no, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. definitely imagine this being uh, a little too pulpy for some people's taste because it is very irreverent, both with its yeah. you know gleeful violence and its uh, you know silly sexuality and things like that. Uh, but yeah, if it. I feel like this is a click for a lot of people, but there are certain people it certainly won't click for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's so it's so R-rated in its comedy and yeah. in its uh, to, and when it wants to get more serious, it's very R-rated. But because um, yeah, you don't see too many shows that are this like vulgar. <laughs> here's a vagina. Yeah, <laughs> like here's a here's a pick for you. Yeah, I was not expecting that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for being here. You can subscribe, click that bell, hit that like button. Who's been your favorite character so far on the show? If the answer is Peacemaker, make it a little bit more fun and cite someone else. Hey, let's do a page. <laughs> Scuba Steve. Scuba, the reason we want to shout you out today is because you've been part of our Patreon page for years now. Years. I want to thank you. It's 2022, and I hope that whatever resolutions you have for this year, that it's a great one. You're able to achieve it. And more importantly, the reason why you're chosen for this one is because if I ever had to assassinate a child, the great thing about you is I know you are loyal, and you are much more twisted than us in so many ways, oh, just yeah. from the brief conversation conversations we've had i can tell you're kind of a sick mother effer you're a sick guy you're a sick guy but we like you. sick people we like that so to have you on our team if i can't pull the trigger i know you will Absolutely. i know you'll go in there you'll murder slaughter a village of kids for us no hesitation you won't even, you won't even ask why why are we doing <laughs> such a horrendous already action. doing it for us and that's what makes you one of the best super ejects that have ever existed so thank you scuba steve never and change wait for our orders